This is Mark Wilson at Glen Sound Electronics. Um, we're here to show you through our digital commentary system, the GDC 6432. The GDC 6432, we refer to internally just as the digital commentary system, is a two-part system. You can see here we have on top there the uh, commentators box for three commentators, and underneath the base station is a 1U 19-inch rack unit. System works one for one, one commentary box to one base station, is a complete digital commentary system. Let's look firstly at the commentary box. The commentary box is for three commentators. You can see there we have three identical sections on the top. The inputs are on the front panel. You can see we have the XLR for the input, which is mic line 48 volt phantom switchable, and the headphone socket there as well. Um, you'll also see on the side there is um, uh, line D. Uh, this is an auxiliary input. Um, that you can also use, but it's line only, there's no mic amplifier on that input. On the top panel you can see there are eight inputs into the headphone amplifier that allow the operator to create their own custom mix of the audio. Those eight inputs are freely assignable, any audio you want. You can see there we have them labelled, I mean traditional labelling, the fallback, the program, guide, audio, international sound, the crowd effects auxiliary talkbacks and we typically have yellow for the coordinator or the program director and the grey control at the bottom there for the technician so the operator can create their own audio mix in their own headphones from those sources there's also a small push button just to the side of each pot that allows that source to be rooted in the headphones individually for each commentator from their left ear to their right ear or in both ears so they could make sure they have their program audio and international sound in both ears at a comfortable level, but they could have their engineer at a quieter level in one ear, just to the side if there's any engineer messages. Each pot within the configuration software can be configured to go to a preset dim level or all the way off to cut. The reason for this is sometimes you want to be able to allow the operator to turn the pot down but not be able to turn it completely off. The coordinator, for example, you don't want them to inadvertently turn the pot all the way down so that they can't hear any important messages coming from the coordinator. It would always be available. The other buttons on each uh, monitoring strip at the top there, the on-off button, the on-air button at the top uh, turns the input on and off, and then the smaller round push buttons further down they are the talkback buttons, the assignable talkback buttons, which typically would mute the microphone as they were pushed. But all the button configuration on that top panel, the operation of the buttons is configurable. For example, the talk buttons can be set to uh, be momentary, so they release when you let them go in typical fashion. But they can also be latching, so when you press them they lock on and lock off. Or in our intelligent mode, which means when you give it a quick press, it locks on and off. But if you hold it a bit longer, it will act as a momentary and release when you let it go, which is a, a common configuration. The mic amplifiers at the front are very high quality. They are actually on this box itself, the mic amplifiers. So when we get into and talk about the remote control later on, you are actually controlling the front end of our unit with the uh, remote control functions. You'll see on the front there is a phantom power switch on the button. That is one of the switches that are configurable, so that can be locked off. So if you are using phantom power microphones, you can lock that button off so the operators don't inadvertently press it and um, affect the gain of the microphone. So that's um, basically the front panel of the unit. If we now look at the, um, the back of the unit for further information, we will see we have AES and analog audio inputs and outputs. The unit has eight inputs and eight outputs that are carried along the cable connection to the base station. On the front we have four inputs, the three commentators plus the auxiliary on the front. Then on the back we add another four inputs. You've got the auxiliary input A and B for analog and you've also got the AES input which give you seven and eight as well. So one, two, three, four on the front, 5 and 6 in analog, which is the auxiliary input, and then 7 and 8 in the uh, the AES input there. So that's the, the 8 inputs that come into the unit itself. Those connections on the back, they allow lots of interfacing, 
typically if your reporters have made a local recording and you would like them to be able to connect your recording into your um, system so that they can upload it either straight to the uh, commentary control area or straight back to the station that can be pre-configured they can just simply plug it into the back of this unit and the auxiliary outputs as you can see there sometimes they're used to connect directly to a, an active mm -hmm. monitor in the commentary control area and that can be used for an off-air program audio for the um, commentators and allow you to uh, use talkback off-air to the commentators via speaker perhaps um, before the broadcast starts so that gives a degree of flexibility there with the configuration on the output side the analog outputs and the AES output they are paralleled because on the front we have three sets of headphones and there's two channels on each headphone so that's two four six for six outputs on the front then on the back you have output seven and eight which are parallel between seven and eight analog and seven and eight on the AES as well so you uh, you get maximum flexibility there on the analog connections you'll also see that we have mini jacks uh, three and a half mil jack sockets there that allows the connection of uh, either stereo or mono connections the A and B is the stereo connection which will split the signal and if you put the connection to the A or B input on each side it will sum um, a stereo input down to one channel on the left side of the box we have the Ethernet connections there are different types of connections back to the base station every box has the coaxial connection you can see there we have the BNC which is the connection um, back to the base station it's probably the most common connection on this unit because coax is widely available on most um, OB trucks uh, it's robust very low cost and our digital system works very well across the coax as well and will give you up to 400 meters range away from the base station and also includes power to the local box as well so a single cable connection carries your eight channels of audio to the box away from the box and it also carries power as well um, you also get an option next you can pick one of the Ethernet connections we have an RJ45 for the copper Ethernet connection or you can specify that with an SFP slot to use an SFP module for a fiber link on copper Ethernet we use power over Ethernet to power the box so in a direct connection that will power um, the commentary box from the base station and with the fiber connection obviously there's no power over fiber so you'll see there on the back we have the uh, local DC input for powering the commentary box locally if you're using a fiber link there are options on the fiber connections we have two other options on the DCU3 commentators box uh, you can specify the fiber with a, a Neutrik Opticon Duo connector or with a Limo connector if you would prefer to use the uh, cables that also carry power uh, that is an option for those as well Neutrik Opticon Duo or a Limo connector uh, so that's the rear panel and that about covers the functions and facilities uh, deliberately kept very simple in a very similar fashion to the previous generations of Glen Sound commentary which have been widely used around world sport so th there is a great deal of familiarization uh, and comfort factor with uh, operators so although this is a very powerful system the commentary box itself is very uh, familiar and it's uh, not a, a daunting use for them all the power of the unit is left to the the engineering side it still looks like a simple easy to operate box for the commentators so we move on to our base station the digital commentators control unit this contains all the engineering end function of the system on the front panel on the left hand side you can see there are four sections A, B, C, D um, there are the small blue buttons next to the level controls this is the gain up and the gain down so the engineer from the base station here is able to adjust the mic gain remotely from the base station as I mentioned the microphone amplifiers are actually on the, the front end of the commentary box uh, so we're, we're, you're adjusting the uh, proper front end gain of the system to maximize the, the sound quality you can see the level next to each meter very simple to adjust there's also a, a lineup indicator as well to let you know when you're, the, when you're at the center lineup position underneath those we also have controls for phantom power you can adjust the phantom power for each commentator's position and there is a speak button that's the direct talk back using the input microphone on the right hand side 
or the external microphone on the right hand side of the front panel to talk back to the uh, corresponding commentator A, B or C. You'll notice level D also has the gain controls and mic phantom power. It will just work as a straightforward line gain control. The um, There's no phantom power on position D because that was just future proofing. In the center section um, we have the rotary encoders A, B, C, D and international sound. This is the output mixer so the engineer control in this box can create their own output mix. Typically on the rear panel you would have all of the direct commentators available as well um, with direct outputs which could be taken to a separate mixer for, for, for mixing there um, but we can also create a local mix um, that, that's output separately as a program mix with or without international sound as you choose and that is set here. Touching each encoder will bring up the gain level of the of the pot onto the PPM meter above it on a quick timeout of about two seconds just so you can see where you've got the gain level and uh, that prevents any accidental adjusting of the output mix. International sound would typically come in uh, as a separate input and be available there to mix into the final program as the, that's the typical non-commentary audio channel that you would mix into the program signal. Underneath there you also have access to the the other talkback circuits on the system. We have talkback 1, talkback 2, the coordinator and the fourth button there says all comms um, that allows the engineer to talk to each three ABC of the commentator's headphones at the same time. Next along we have the line ident. The line ident, two line idents in fact, one for the program audio, one for the coordinator. They are configurable in terms of where they're routed to. Very simple, play, record and stop. It's about a 47-48 second recording loop that you're available to access, a digital recording loop. As you're in the record mode, you talk about your designation, where you are. This is uh, Wembley, we are ready to go all set up, uh, waiting for confirmation. When you let go, it will then put in a 1.6k tone up to the maximum recording time and then start looping. Identical for the uh, second ident as well. On the right hand side then the monitoring sections. Section you can see the green LEDs indicate the 16 inputs that are coming into the system with again an encoder just to the side. The headphones are on the right hand side. The rotary encoder will scroll through each of those 16 inputs. When you select it, you are then monitoring it. It sends it out of the back panel and out to the headphones. You can keep selecting an input to monitor. Every time you select another input, it adds it to the mix. So in that way, you can monitor multiple inputs at the same time if you wish. Um, and holding that encoder down for a few seconds will clear all of the selections so that you could reset and start again if required. With a simple PPM meter above just to show the uh, the level of each source then the small pots there you see you're able to adjust the level separately for the left ear and right ear coming into the headphones because typically when monitoring you may wish to have a program in the right ear for example where the source monitoring is just in the left ear so you can adjust levels separately. There is a control for the side tone which is the, the operator's own voice in their headphones and then the microphone gain of the front panel or the external microphone as connected from the front. Um, that completes the functions available from the front panel. Just one extra thing you can see on the left hand side there we have the yellow button that forms two functions. If you hold that and tap one of the speak buttons for the A, B or C commentator that will perform a call function down to the commentary box so you can uh, get the attention of the, the commentators on the box. If the microphone is off air then the unit will beep and the engineer light will flash. If the unit is on air then the engineer uh, light just flashes on its own. The same is true in reverse actually if uh, on the commentary box if you double tap the engineer button you can make an alarm call to the engineer's base station here so that you have a call function bi-directionally within the system as well. On to the rear panel of the DCCU. You will see on the left hand side we have our audio I.O. There are two types, analog and AES. 
non-surprisingly. They are configurable. You can select in pairs any combination of the 16 inputs and 16 outputs. Uh, so, for example, a very common configuration is to have half the I.O. analog and half the I.O. in AES. Uh, which is it's very simple. That means you would have eight in and eight out analog and eight in and eight out or digital channels on AES, four in, four out AES. Any combination of pairs is possible. So you can have the whole system AES with just a single pair in and out of analog if you wish. The way the rear panel looks on that left side will change a little depending on the I.O. that is specified. The default system is actually all digital, so uh, you would have a single row of connectors that is the I.O. just for AES. So uh, 8 AES in and out, giving you the 16 digital channels in and out, is the default system with the uh, the analog paired I.O. cards being uh, an extra if you needed to add analog audio. Although it seems to be quite common now to have program main audio on AES and uh, leave talkback audio in the analog world. But with uh, the GDC 6432, you have your options there. On the rear panel, moving on, I won't go into every configuration and every option, but the main connections there, you see we have a BNC right in the center that is your word clock, if you need to keep the system synced to your house clock. The USB connection, that allows connection to a PC, for the configuration files. The whole system of the digital commentary is a digital router. It is a 64 input, 32 output digital router, hence the name of the uh, product. We'll go on and explain that a bit more in a moment, but um, that's the connection there for updating the configuration files via USB, via a direct connection to a PC. When you connect to a PC, the system is just shows up as a, a, a drive on the PC and you'll see the configuration folders, but we'll go into that in uh, a bit more detail shortly. Next to that you have the RJ45 for the Ethernet control. This allows your network connected PC to simply put the IP address of the base station into their web browser to bring in the remote web browser interface, which will allow full remote control of the system. Again, we'll look at that in a bit more detail in a moment. Under that we have the D-Type connector, which gives you eight DC loops. This allows you to connect further functions uh, to the incoming or outgoing switch functions of the unit, particularly useful for interfacing with intercom systems on the talkbacks. There are eight loops there that you can assign freely. Next to that, in the blocked off, white blocked off area there, they are the uh, connections down to the DCU3 commentators box. As I mentioned, every unit as standard would have the coax connection, so you have the BNC there for the coaxial direct connection, then above it um, you have your Ethernet connection, either an SFP slot or an RJ45 for a direct copper ethernet connection. We then have a uh, termination plug. You can see the back of the termination plug there is a monitoring link. Because the GDC6432 is used very often in large commentary situations, when these systems are used in multiples, uh, if you have 10 systems for example, you can have Y cables that connect up and link the monitoring buses of all of the systems so that the monitoring and talkback of all systems is linked so a single engineer can monitor and communicate with every commentator on every connected system. So that is purely just to uh, facilitate a single engineer uh, when he's working with multiple systems. Um, then there's the IEC there for a switch mode power supply, quite standard. Here we have the web browser remote interface. This is running in a web page. All you have to do is enter the IP address of the connected unit and that will bring up this controller either embedded within the page or in a separate pop-out. For multiple systems they simply run as separate tabs within a browser. It works very effectively when you're using multiple systems. And this does three very powerful jobs for us. First, it allows us to monitor the status of the entire system. You'll be able to see the input levels, you'll be able to see the monitor output levels, you'll be able to see if commentators have got their microphones on and off. You can see here what pot positions the commentators have got their headphones at. So it's easy to see, for example, if your commentator is complaining that he can't hear the uh, 
the engineer properly, you can see that it's because he hasn't got his pot turned up. It's down too low. The blue dots to the left and right above each pot, that indicates the left-right headphone switching, whether that pot is going to their left ear or right ear. You can see if the phantom power's on. You can see the position, value position of each input gain. Across the bottom there, we can see the output mixer. We can see where that is set. Um, and it gives a very accurate uh, real-time snapshot of the system status for any engineer using the remote software. Secondly, uh, most importantly, it also allows us to control everything on this system. It's all real-time, so if you turn the commentator's mic on and off, you will be turning it straight on and straight off. You can do it directly from this remote control interface. You can turn the phantom power on and off. Most importantly, you can adjust the gain, the front-end mic gain, of your commentator's microphone. So the three commentators there, you can see the levels bouncing next to the, um, the up and down controls, and you can adjust that simply up and down to uh, maximize the gain for the commentator's microphone. At the bottom, the faders we have there, you can adjust the output mix, add in a little more international sound, adjust the commentator's output, uh, all very simply done remotely from our web interface. Lastly, you will see at the top left there is a little checkbox that says Enable Audio. You can, from the PC that this interface is running on, be the engineer's position of the GDC6432 system, thus allowing you direct audio connection, exactly the same as it would be from the front panel base station. So that means if you enable the audio and you have the available bandwidth, which is normally fine on a, a, a local area network, because it, it is uncompressed audio, so it's about 2 megabytes in each direction, it means if I press the speak button at the bottom for commentator A, I can speak directly to commentator A, and if he talks back to me, I will be able to hear him. I can talk to the other commentators, they can talk to me. I can play and record the two, interna uh, the two line idents that are on the system. I can monitor across the top, the green uh, controls at the top, I can monitor any of the inputs into the system and I can use the other talkbacks that are part of the system as well, either a direct talkback or just a, a, a monitor listen. Making this very, very powerful, um, full integration from the engineer's perspective as a remote interface directly into the GDC system. I can see what's happening, I can control it and I can communicate as well. It's a, a very, very powerful remote system that comes um, as standard with the GDC 6432. Here we have our DCU3, the commentator's box, switch configuration page. Again, there was a degree of future-proofing here for up to eight channels. Not all channels are relevant, but you can see that from using the first four controls there, you can set the switch configurations of the four commentary positions on the commentator's box. I won't go into the, the, the full detail of this, but you can see that you are able to disable buttons, lock buttons on so they're permanently on. You're able to alter the configuration of the talkback buttons, whether they are suppressed. Suppressed means when it's held down, it turns the mic off. When you let it go, it comes back on. It's a suppression that returns delatches and means that it will uh, turn off and not come back on. So you can have it so that if you press a talkback it will mute the microphone but doesn't come back on when you let it go. These controls are settable independently for each button so you really are able to find the exact combination of the button switching profile that you need and up there the top right where we have eight channels um, we're only interested in one to four and this page is repeated to channel 234 and you set the profiles separately for each channel saving it back down to the box. Both this configuration utility and the router mixer software we're going to look at in a moment they're the uh, software that is accessed via a USB connection to the PC. It is a separate application that you run on your PC it will ask you where your USB connected base station uh, DCCU is and it will load the profile up from the existing profile in there and you simply save it back down to the same location when you've finished making your 
changes. For safety's sake, you can also store local copies on your own PC. If you have different profiles, you can save them locally on your PC as well. Or indeed, within the file structure, when you're connected to the GDC 6432 base station, the DCCU, there are 10 folders within there. It uses whatever profile is in folder 1, so you can also put um, alternate profiles in folders 2 to 10. Uh, that you can use if you have different settings for different event types um, but folder 1 is the profile that it uses. So that's the DCU config uh, which is one of the applications uh, a separate program that runs uh, via PC. And here we have the um, mixer config utility for the base station, the DCCU. This is perhaps the most sophisticated part of the entire GDC 6432 system. Some users can spend a lot of time here configuring a system. Let me tell you from, from the start here that you do not need to use this section at all. The system ships in a standard configuration which is completely fine for the majority of applications and indeed with our previous systems that weren't configurable is exactly how they would have worked. So you don't need to use this section at all. Many users do prefer to use this system so that they are able to set the digital commentary system up exactly as they want it because this is the system that controls all of the uh, routing. As we've mentioned, on the back of the base station there are 16 inputs and 16 outputs. On the commentator's box we have 8 inputs and 8 outputs. Um, there are auxiliary audio connections as well. On the front of the, the DCCU control box we have the two microphone inputs for the engineer. We have the headphone outputs which are two channels for the engineer. There are two outputs that are derived from the two line idents and you can see there's a, a combination of audio routing that you're able to provide and assign. They are the physical audio inputs and outputs. The system itself is a 64 input 32 output router because there are multiples of many of the inputs uh, for different reasons and some of the some of the inputs and outputs do loop and are used in different ways which means we have a total of 64 inputs and 32 outputs at the end of the day up here you see we have an AES mix and an IP mix the AES mix refers to the mix on the that is used for the front panel control on the DCCU base station there is a separate mix that's used if you operate the system via remote control so there are two options there's a, a profile you can use for the front panel and a profile you can use if you're using it for remote control. You see we have a tab for DC loops that assign, uh, allows the assigning of the DC loops function. You can assign what sources go to each meter and you can see here that there is a global compressor that we can set for the, um, the inputs. So we'll just look at the, um, the first tab, the AES3 mix, which is a, a standard mix that is used. On the left hand side, the mix inputs there, you can see the 64 inputs. And then on the top right hand side, we have the mixer output. Um, in that mixer output, the drop down there is where you will find your 32 output channels. I won't go into great detail of this application, um, because that would be quite a, a detailed presentation in itself. Um, but just to give you an idea of, of how the system goes together, if I um, show you a typical output, if we go down to uh, one of the program outputs, if I choose number 11 here, which is program mix, you can see that it's called CCU, which is the base station, the commentator's control unit. Output 11 we have defined as the program mix. You will see when we selected that, the page to the left changed a little. This shows us from the 64 inputs available what is routed to output 11, the program mix, and under what conditions and at what level. Um, you can see that most of them are muted. Most of the inputs available do not go to the program mix output. But you can see obviously some that do, quite important ones. If you look at 33, 34 and 35, they are the, uh, the mic inputs the main inputs, which you obviously need to go to the um, program mix output. You can see here we're actually using the compressed version of the inputs. If you read the designation on, on input 33, CU for commentator's unit, compressed A mic. Uh, there is also, if you look up at 25, we have the commentator's unit A mic, which is the uncompressed version, 
which bypasses the compressor. So you have an option of using um, the compressed input or the uncompressed input. So if you look back at input 33, you will see we have three controls that act upon that input before it goes to the output. And this is the um, the ideology of how our systems work. So if you read control A for input 33, you can see plus. Um, plus means it needs to be on. It's looking for an on. So if that's not on, then nothing else will happen. So the, the other controls don't make any difference. So before we go any further, the plus means that this has to be on. And what it says is CU, so commentator's unit, channel 1, speak to program. So the speak to program is the red square on off button. So we, before anything else happens, it is looking for the on and off button on that channel to be on. If that's true, if that's correct, it will then move on to control B. If you look at control B, it says CCU fader 1. So the commentator's control unit, our 1U base station, it's looking at fader 1. Fader 1 is the, um, the output mix control in the middle of the front panel. So it's taking a reading from that fader 1. So it's taking a level setting from fader 1. Um, and whatever level that fader is set at is the level that it is passing out to the uh, output 11 program mix. Um, uh, a slightly strange one here, um, but you'll see that control C says minus. So for this to carry on, this must be off. So it's looking for this to be off, and it's the CCU speak to program. From the front of the commentary control unit, the base station, you are able to press two little um, buttons at the top of the front panel, which allow the engineer to speak directly to the program output. So what this control is doing is saying that must be off. What it means is, with that line in, that the engineer is able to override the commentators. Um, it's a, a safety situation, because uh, obviously an engineer would not normally talk to the program output, but that is the standard configuration that um, it's looking for the speak to program to be off, thus, in effect, giving priority to the engineer speak to program um, if they really need to. It means, um, presumably, if they're off air, that uh, an engineer can interrupt a commentator talking back to uh, the director for, for an important matter. In that way, you can see that the three commentators all go through to that program output mix in the same way. And you can see as well that um, input 28 there, which is the commentary unit line in, which is the fourth input, has the same setting as well that allows that fourth input to also go to the, the output mix. And that's basically the uh, system in terms of how you put a, a profile together if you need to start changing uh, settings. Perhaps a bit more interesting if you look at output 17, the commentator's unit A left ear. If you look at the profile there for the A left ear, this is the audio that is sent to the commentator's commentator A's left headphones. Um, and you can see that there is a, a, a lot sent down to the headphones that's available for monitoring and that you can set what audio goes to which pot. You can see that you can set defined levels. You can see at 42, for example, that the program mix is sent to commentator's headphone channel 1, pot 2, and the pot is set to cut, so it goes all the way down. But you can also see input 47 there, the coord go, that the commentator's headphone channel 1 goes to pot 7, but it's on dim because it's the coordinator he can't turn it off it's just a um, it, it just goes down to a lower level but he can't turn it off uh, if I select that for example if I double oh, double click it you'll see the control section opens on the right hand side to give you an idea of the options that are available for each control that you can set you probably get a touch a feeling there for um, the options that are available when you're setting up a um, custom routing. Uh, luckily, you always start from our default. If you do want to change it, most people just need to change a few things. So a, a simple modification is relatively straightforward. You don't have to start from scratch each time because we do have the 
uh, default cons configuration, which, as I said, you don't need to change because it, uh, it straight out of the box it will be fine for the majority of situations. But you do have that option should you need to. I think that concludes our overview of the system. As I said, we can go into many more details of how the GDC 6432 operates because it's a very powerful system allowing um, lots of options for majority of commentary uh, or news announcing situations for both OB vans, uh, for fixed events or for off-tube use. It's a very, very flexible system and if you require any further information please get in touch with us um, via our website at Glensound, which is www.glensound.co.uk, or you can email us directly to our main email address, which is sales at glensound.co.uk.